YouTube and Snapchat and fucking shake your tits and swing your dicks. It's Friday and it's fucking raining again. But you can dry your spirits with another nipple hardening episode of your favorite internet sensation with libation. That's right, the Friday wrap up. Before we get today's show kicked off, I want to tip my hat to today's libation. Spooky season, kids. I hate that fucking term. So, you know, again with Halloween coming up. October's starting to wrap up a little bit. Thank God I can't wait for this fucking month to be over. You know, I mentioned that last week I was drinking a pumpkin beer. And my friend Kevin's wife, Simone, made fun of me. She's like, that's just stupid. That's gay. You know. <laughs> Shut up, Simone. Anyway, uh, today's for you, Simone. Just for you. I'm having another pumpkin beer today. But this one, a different one. Um, this is actually the best pumpkin beer you could fucking find out there. This is the Sarnak Pumpkin Ale. Um, the reason I like it is because it's not very pumpkin-y. I actually fucking hate pumpkin. Um, I like the pumpkin spice flavor. This has got a very heavy cinnamon and allspice flavor to it, so it tastes more like, I guess, pumpkin pie than actual fucking pumpkin. I don't know, it just tastes better. Again, it is a pumpkin beer. You gotta limit your, your intake on these things. You know, no more than like two or three, otherwise your ass is gonna turn into a fucking bathroom bazooka. Okay, so, you know, let's let's give it a little shot. Little, little TCB, baby. If you don't know what that is, you better get yourself educated. All right, so let's give it. It smells delightful. It smells like a like fall. This is what fucking fall is supposed to smell like. So I was to drink up and be somebody. Mmm. Now that is good. That's better than the fucking shipyard. Sorry, it is. Shipyard's all right, but you know if I'm gonna drink a pumpkin beer, which again isn't often. This is maybe my second one this month. Um, that's the one. All right, kids. What a fucking week. Holy shit. I, tell you, I couldn't wait for Friday. You know, work was so fucking busy this week that I actually had no clue what day of the week it was. Like, Monday felt like Wednesday, and I thought Tuesday was Thursday, and I thought yesterday was last week. I have no fucking idea what planet I'm on, okay? Thank God today is fucking Friday, and tomorrow's going to rain all day uh, again. So, I, what is this, fucking Seattle? Is it, I mean, is it is Seattle Saturdays? Is that what they say? Every fucking weekend this month, it's rained. Every weekend. Every weekend. Okay? My poor Harley's just sitting there looking at me like, you know, because during the week, I don't have fucking time. So yeah, maybe I'd take a ride on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. I'm going between that and the house, the rain. I, I got my fucking head is up my ass, so. Yeah, there's that. Uh, okay, what else? Is, oh, 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 I got called for fucking jury duty. Oh, my God, can you imagine this shit? No, last year, uh, was it last year? No, I think it was over the summer. I got a jury duty summons, and I, I, I postponed it because I was busy. I didn't have fucking time for it. So I got one the other day in the mail. Um, <clears throat> I actually forgot about it. I got a call next Friday to see if I report on the 30th, and I know my fucking luck, they're gonna, they're gonna fucking call me, I know it, so now I'm gonna have to go in there on Monday, the 30th, and pretend that fucking Tourette's or something, okay, and which I'm very good at, by the way, you know, like, you know, you just talk, you know, just, you know, start doing that shit when it gets quiet, and hopefully, hopefully, they don't pick me, that's all I'm saying. So we'll see. Uh, oh, sad news. Burt Young, Paulie from Rocky, died last week. Uh, the 8th. Okay? I, you know, and I don't know how the fuck I missed it, but I saw something this week, and I was like, oh, shit. So he was 83 years old. He didn't die of any kind of fucking, you know, illness or anything. He died because he was fucking old. I know, I'm using the giant state. It's disgusting. And here's a fun fact about Burt Young. He was actually Italian. Okay, you know, he played, the character he played in Rocky was Italian, but he was actually Italian. He was born Gerald Tommaso De Luiz. I don't know where the fuck he got Burt Young from. Um, but he was actually born in Corona, Queens. He's a Queens boy, you know. Uh, he's a former Marine and boxer. As a matter of fact, his boxing record, he was 32 and 34. Pretty fucking good. Um, and he was a painter. Not a house painter, like an artist, you know. Um, he was a resident of Port Washington, so he lived right over here on the island. Uh, he was often seen in the area, and uh, he was described as a nice guy. Matter of fact, somebody I know um, met him 
I don't know, I think it was a fundraiser or a gala or something. He, had, he was displaying some of his art and she went over to him and she spoke to him. You know, she's a Rocky fan or whatever. And she said he was a very, very sweet man. Which I could say, you know, a very soft-spoken kind of guy. Um, at one point, he even owned a restaurant in the Bronx. So, you know, Burt Young was, for lack of a better term, a renaissance man. So he's going to be duly missed. Hey, Paul. Hey, yo, Paulie. How's all of it, my friend? Okay. So, car dealership morons and another DC shit show. Hold on to something, baby. It's going to be a bumpy one on the persecution of Donald Trump. So another fucking gag order. I, 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 this is the new thing now. So the DC judge, right? That's trying him for this, this bullshit insurrection nonsense from January 6th slapped him with a fucking gag order so he can't talk about the 2021 election or the DC indictment you know what what happened to you know I love like the first amendment right freedom of speech and it's only freedom of speech when it's convenient for people for example all these fucking rioters these Palestinian rioters these BLM jerk corps all of these fucking assholes Okay, can say whatever the fuck they want, do whatever the fuck they want, and everyone goes, well, yeah, it's freedom of speech. But if you, God forbid, say, you know, that vaccines don't work or masks are bullshit or something like that, okay, not saying that, settle down, you. but if, if I should say it, and this brings right to my point, they shut my channel down. They gag you. They call you a fucking terrorist. They call you a problem. You question the fucking outcome of the 2021 election. Holy shit. Boom. They silence you. So is it freedom of speech when it's convenient or is it fucking freedom of speech? I'm a little confused. Please somebody explain it to me. Okay. So yeah. Um, they hit him with a gag order. And speaking of gag orders, he got one from another jerk off judge in New York City. That um, uh, What the fuck is his name? The, the Arthur Angoran. Take a look. I mean, this 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 guy. He he definitely takes it in the shit of this fucking little this little fucking fruit fly. Anyway, he's the judge in that non-existent fraud case in New York City. Um, and he hit he hit Trump with a gag order too, and <clears throat> because Trump posted a pic, there's a there's a, the clerk who's on the judge's staff uh, posed with a picture uh, posed with Chuck Schumer, and. Trump posted something on Truth, uh, Truth Social saying, oh, this is Schumer's girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. So he had it on his social media feed. So when he got hit with the gag order, they all took it down. They took it down. But somebody, it's so hard to find good help these days. It really is. Um, somebody forgot to take it off of Trump's website. And the judge threatened to throw fucking, hold him in contempt and throw him in jail for that. Imagine this shit. Imagine there's murderers out there in the street. They want to throw fucking Trump in jail because of a fucking picture on his on his website. Imagine this shit. There was some fucking spade that ran down a goddamn subway the other day, homeless motherfucking crazy crackhead, and, and pushed some fucking broad into a tr moving train. Okay? Moving train. She's in critical condition, this lady. She's going to work. This fucking jerk off fucking pushes her into a goddamn train. Him they don't block up. They get, oh, he has to be treated. He's mentally ill. The fucking judge is mentally ill, okay? But Trump, they want to throw in jail for this shit. So, you know what? I, I was almost hoping they would, because you, you have any idea what that would have done. I mean, they might as well have just fucking handed him the election right then and there. But in lieu of that today, he hit him with a $5,000 fine and again told him, you know, if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't heed the gag order, they're going to hold him in contempt and throw him in a fucking clink. Imagine this shit. Those fucking motherfuckers in the joint would be high-fiving Donald all the way down. Because, yeah, let's go put him in Rikers. Watch what happens. Assholes. Anyway, speaking of this fucking bullshit case, okay, in New York City, Letitia James, the Attorney General, seems to be in a little bit of a financial quagmire. Uh, it, it's come to light that she borrowed, borrowed, about $770,000 from her campaign funds, and it's gone unaccounted for. We can't, they can't seem to find uh, where it went or what she did. But they want to know what the fuck she did with it. There's been no um, uh, attempt to pay the loan back. There's been no structure to pay it back. It's just, it's like she grabbed seven hundred and seventy grand and probably bought herself a fucking Mercedes and a house. Because that's what they do. Um, anyway... <clears throat> 
So, and, you know, isn't that nice? <laughs> Talk about the pot calling the kettle black, literally. Um, anyway, for a treat, here's a clip of Trump and tennis pro uh, Serena Williams. Before he was president, when it was all right to like him before they labeled you a fucking terrorist. Take a look at this. And Donald Trump is always where the cameras are when it involves making money. And today at Lowe's Island in Sterling, Virginia, he opened the Tennis Performance Center. Trump volleyed with Serena Williams, shoes off, coat on. Donald Trump showing he's got some game, some, little. It's right there at the Trump National Club. Both are tremendous facilities. It was good to see him out there, and the fans seemed to enjoy it. Now, can you imagine Biden trying to attempt that? He would hit himself with the racket, piss his pants, and fall down and die. All right, kids. <laughs> On another Biden blunder. So Joey goes to Israel this week. What a nice thing. What a man she is. Please. Fucking asshole. Why the fuck did Biden go to Israel right before they invade Gaza? This whole fart is just going to get in everyone's, just got in everyone's fucking way. It's all he did. He's wandering around, uh, you know. He probably stalled the invasion by two or three days because the Israelis are nice. They're given the chance, you know, civilian chance for civilians to get the fuck out of Gaza before they turn it into a parking lot, okay. But he's basically trying to talk them into a ceasefire. I mean, he's saying the right things, but he's doing the wrong ones. That's pretty much been his entire career. Um... God, I mean, first of all, why, why would they let him go to... For, God forbid he got killed. God help us. Then we'd be stuck with that clapping retard. Fucking Kamala. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. I was thinking, as he's flying into fucking Israel, I said, they're going to fucking kill him. I, which, then we're going to be stuck with this cackling idiot. Uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, the whole fucking... The whole thing was pointless. He could have done everything over a phone call. Makes a big show. Gives a press conference. Fell asleep. Um, there was supposed to be other leaders from the area, like the, you know, King of Jordan, the President of Egypt, all this other shit. They all snubbed him. Like, why, 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 why go see this way? He's this stupid. Right, I don't go. That's, they all snubbed him. Okay, they were all supposed to have a summit. They snubbed him. Never would they have done that to Trump. Now, while he was there, um, in Gaza, there was an attack on a hospital. And they're saying that, like, hundreds of civilians were killed. And right away, the fucking idiotic fucking left, you know, left-wing media, the fake news went, Oh, Israel bombed a hospital in Gaza. You gotta have fucking shit for brains if you think that the Israeli government bombed a civilian hospital, killing hundreds of people. The Jews... They may irritate your children. They may irritate civilians. Absolutely. They're annoying. They could be annoying. Let's face it. You go to Brooklyn, you'll see what I'm saying. But they don't kill innocent people and babies especially, okay? These people have been through the fucking Holocaust. Okay? They, they, they're not, that's not their MO, okay? They're giving these fucking Palestinian idiots a chance to get all their civilians out of Gaza before they go in there and just, like I said, flatten it. So they're not going to bomb a hospital. So like I said, you got to have fucking shit for brains if you even thought that. So, <clears throat> turns out, it wasn't the Israelis who bombed the hospital. It was these stupid fucking raghead terrorists that they can't shoot straight. 
they sent a bunch of fucking rockets. It never even hit the hospital. It hit a parking lot, and like a half a dozen people were killed. Okay? Who were all Palestinians. Probably future terrorists. Okay? So, you know, it wasn't a big deal. So they went, and everybody's going, going fucking crazy. Saying, oh, how dare the Israel, how dare Israelis bought. First of all, if they did, which they didn't, but if they did, I mean, they'd be justified. Look what Hamas did. How many people, I mean, the, the people that are trying to say the Palestinians uh, are victims, you're a fucking retard, okay? You're absolutely retarded. Okay, they, They're killing and raping children. Okay, if you have like a, a, a girl, a daughter or something, like a teenager, and she was taken hostage, you better hope they kill her. I, and I know it's a terrible thing to say. You better hope they kill her because they're probably raping the shit out of that kid. That kid's never going to be fucking right ever again. And that's a terrible thing. There are parents on TV saying that even. You know? So, it, 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 not to make fun of that. I'm not. Because it, it, it's just, it's fucking horrible, you know? Um, so, it, it, it's just, it, the whole fucking week, it's just been a shit show over there. Um, so bottom line, it turned out they even have proof. Once the hospital was bombed, there was a park a lot. Hamas did it, but they're all saying the Israelis did it because they're full of shit. Now, I don't know if they accidentally bombed this parking lot. <laughs> they might have, or they might have done it on purpose, uh, which I don't think they would have. I think if they were going to do it on purpose, they might have actually bombed the hospital, but they just spun it in their favor, you know. Um, they're, they're smart in that aspect. You know, they, they know how to use propaganda, which is what Trump meant when he said they were smart and everybody goes fucking crazy. Um, so while uh, Biden was in Israel, he announced his support, how he was going to back Israel. And then in the same breath, he says he wants to give $100 million in relief to the Palestinians. Uh, what the fuck? That's just going to go right back to Hamas. Netanyahu should have bitch slapped him right then and there. There's no, first of all, and I'm going to say something, and I, five people are going to grab their chest and fall over. Oh my God, that's racist. There's no such thing as a fucking innocent Palestinian, okay? Let me explain what I mean. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm, not, I'm against killing children, obviously. So, I mean, you leave the kids alone. But see, this culture, this fucking culture that they have, they're taught to hate Jews and Americans from birth. From birth. Okay? From like... They're, they're told from children that Jews don't have the right to live. This is, It's indoctrinated. It's, it's one thing if you're like anti-Semitic. Ah, I fucking hate Jews. They're annoying. Okay? Or, you know, something like that. That's one thing. Is it right? No. But, you know, some people are, some people aren't. Whatever. Okay? But that's different than this culture. This culture is taught to hate them. To a degree that's not even, it's malevolent. Like you, they're taught to kill them from a fucking young age. So all of these Hamas terrorists or freedom fighters or whatever the fuck you want, ragheads with rifles, whatever the fuck you want to call them, okay? They all started out as Palestinian children. They grew up listening to this, okay? There's not a single fucking Palestinian that'll say that, you know, ah, maybe we should leave the Jews alone. None, okay? There's not a single one of them that thinks America's a great place, even though some of them are fucking living here. Okay, that's a whole other story. But they're taught from an early age to feel this way. So that's why I said there's really no such thing as an innocent one. I mean, yeah, children, maybe you can you can rehabilitate them. But as far as the adults go, civilians are not. Fucking kill them all. Just wipe them out. They should have fucking leveled Gaza in the 80s, and they wouldn't have this problem. Okay? We don't need to send these assholes $100 million in relief. They're not this is going to make them love us. Let Iran fucking bother, take care of them. Okay? They're the ones fucking, you know, they're the ones fucking, you know, backing them. Let the Iranians fucking worry about them. And if they don't, fuck them. It's all right. It's less traffic. You understand? It's less people in the world taking up oxygen. It's okay. Right? Jesus Christ. And, and by the way, the White House finally admitted that it's the Iranians back in Hamas, but yet, yet, they haven't pulled back the $6 billion that they released to Iran, which to me, I don't know, is beyond fucking nuts. I, the, when I become the fucking voice of reason in the world, when I'm the one who's defending the, the rights of the Jews, you know what, we have taken a completely fucking wrong turn somewhere, Okay. When I, when I when I am the, the voice of reason, I'm sure there's smarter people than me, well, maybe not in Washington, but out there somewhere, 
Okay? Maybe not a lot. I do have a ridiculously high IQ, but that's a story for another day. If the, when I become the fucking voice of reason, there's a problem. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, Jesus. So, this is long. Okay, so, you know, this is... Now, apparently, U.S. air bases, or U.S. bases, I should say, and embassies overseas are now under attack. We've mobilized two fucking Navy, or ca Navy carrier strike groups with the mention of them sending a third... Let me tell you something, okay? And I know this from experience. Okay, I'll tell you why I know this from... Carrier strike groups are no fucking joke. I was this close to becoming a naval officer. That's a true story. When I left high school, when I... When I when I was graduating high school, that was my career path. I wanted to go into the Navy as an officer. I actually, got an even I even got into the fucking academy. I scored within like the top the top ten. All right. The reason I I, I was hit with a, my paperwork was stamped four F is because I have nerve damage in my hand. That's a story for another day. But could you imagine? Could you imagine me as a? I, I would have been definitely would have been a captain by now, without a doubt. I knew exactly what I had to do. To get it, I wanted the Enterprise at the time. Uh, the Enterprise, the USS Enterprise, was the Navy's flagship. So that was my goal. I wanted to be. I wanted the Enterprise. I just wanted to tell people I was the captain of the Enterprise. My father thought there was something a little mental, you know, a little mentally irregular about me when I told him my career, my, you know, my my career plans. He asked me if I got hit in the head one time too many in the rain. But that's a story for another day also. But could you imagine if I was a skipper of a fucking carrier group? This war would have been over like that before it even started. But, you know, that's speculation we can talk about some other time. So, point being is when they're sending a, it's, when they're sending a strike group, that's like a quarter of the fleet right there, okay? You're sending two... Possibly three? Oh, that could level an entire country within a period of about three or four hours. You know what I mean? We're talking like a missile carrier, the aircraft carrier, squadrons of fucking planes, two destroyers. Like, it's just a fucking, you know, a couple of battleship escorts. Like, it's 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 no joke, dude. This, so the, the fact that they're sending two with the possibility of three, they're anticipating a major conflict. Welcome to World War III, baby. I fucking told you this was going to happen. Guaranteed Netanyahu is texting Trump every night, wondering when he's coming back and that he misses him. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> Donald, when, when are you coming? When, when are you coming back? <laughs> Netanyahu. His, his fucking name is just delights me. It's, it's, it's just a fun name to say. Netanyahu. Like, it just, it delights me every time I hear it on the news. I don't know why. I mean, I would think they should say it properly. Like, Netanyahu! <laughs> like, if they said his name every time like that, I would, I could die a happy man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, kids, on 52 farts. Let's let it rip right off the top of the fart deck. What do we got? A butt burp. Um, this is any noxious utterance of the intestinal system caused by the overconsumption of carbonated beverages, i.e. beer. Now, years ago, I used to have a guy that worked for me. Uh, and, you know, he, used to, he was a degenerate alcoholic. The guy would just drink fucking beer all day long. Just all fucking day long. Just hammering him back, hammering him back. One day we're unloading a truck. And he's standing on top of the truck, and I'm grabbing the boxes and pulling them off with the crates. <clears throat> and this cocksucker farts right in my. And he used to have these. He would get like a couple of, like probably like a 12 pack of beer in him, and he would let these beer farts out that would just fucking utterly putrid. They would instantly turn you murderous. And this cocksucker farts right in my fucking. Just as I turned around to say something, we're gonna hit me in the back of the throat. I punched him so hard in the fucking ass, I broke his goddamn tailbone. Fucking hit him, he went flying. Son of a bitch, never fucking farted ever again. Okay? But that's that's what a butt burp is. Alright, kids, get your tickets out. We're about to hop on to that maniacal magical express of the mayhem and fuckery the crazy trains about to leave the station. Hop but Woohoo! First stop, Long Island. Okay, one tour. Long Island more specifically. So it, I was told of this story the other day and I looked it up on the news. 
And I watched it, and I couldn't fucking stop laughing. It's pretty tragic, but to me, you know, tragedy. Some One man's tragedy is another man's comedy, you know. So, a service employee from Merrick Jeep, Jeep Chrysler Dodge, which is in Wantaw. This is a Westbury Jeep affiliate. You might be familiar with Westbury Jeep. They're right here on Old Country, on uh, Jericho Turnpike. They're both scumbags. Anyway... Uh, and a service employee was killed when another co-worker, a 20-year-old kid, mind you, backed over him with the customer's Grand Cherokee. <laughs> He's taking it out of the service bay. I guess he doesn't know how to use the backup camera or the fucking rearview mirror. And, but what was this guy? They and just fucking hit the guy and killed him. <laughs> I mean... I, I checked, the guy wasn't a midget. Like, I mean, if it was three feet tall, I could see how you don't see him, but this is why you should never hire 20 year old kids to do shit. <laughs> Mira, where's Julio? Oh, uh, I think I kill him with the hip. <laughs> this poor fucking bastard goes to work. He's walking in, all of a sudden, this jerk off fucking backs over him. Imagine being the customer whose Jeep that is, you go to pick up your fucking Jeep from service. My car ready? Well, we had a bit of an issue. Apparently, it was used in a murder. It's now evidence in an investigation. <laughs> and this is why I never take my truck to the dealership for service. Because you never know when they're going to kill another employee with it. So, just saying. I'm pretty sure... That's not covered in the warranty. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, next stop, Washington, D.C. Well, here's the D.C. shit show, kids. So, again, Congress still doesn't have a speaker. So, um, they nominated Steve Scalise to be the candidate. And I told you, Scalise is a great guy, but he's got cancer. He can't do this. So, they nominated him. He stepped down. He's like, listen, thank you, but no thank you. You know, so Jim Jordan was the next runner-up, and I like Jim Jordan. I think he'd be a great speaker. He gets a little speechified a little too often, but again, it's the same eight fucking Republican cocksuckers that were holdouts that are just causing nothing but fucking Malavioda. This guy had three goddamn speaker bouts. It's like McCarthy all over again. They're just refusing to elect him. So <clears throat> the GOP basically told uh, Jimmy, they said, sorry, dude, but we got to get a speaker in. You know, we could be at war tomorrow. All right, we have no fucking congressional leader, which means Congress cannot conduct business. Okay, the Speaker pro tem can only just adjourn meetings and start them. That's it. <clears throat> so there's another uh, vote that they might they might push to give the Speaker pro tem temporary powers. Uh, to, I, 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 again, they they ousted McCarthy with no fucking plan, and this is all this fucking idiot Matt Gates. These eight Republicans really should be fucking. Lined up in front of the goddamn Capitol and shot for fucking treason. Sorry. You know what? Maybe we gotta start getting a little more medieval again. And you see people, oh, they fuck the past, they fall off the line. Okay? When diplomacy doesn't work, street diplomacy will. Every time. While we're in D.C., let's go a little further down the fucking drain. Okay, so Wednesday, <coughs> you know, I, I every time I turn the television on, when I think, when I think the world can't get any fucking dumber... They proved me wrong. So Wednesday, a Jewish group held a protest at the Capitol. Uh, yeah, Jews, okay, follow me. Just let me. A, a, a group of Jewish people, okay, kids, basically college kids. They, you go to college now to get fucking stupid. If I had a kid, I swear to Christ, I would never put them in college. They'd come out retarded. So a group of uh, Jewish college kids held a protest rally in the Capitol. In, actually, in the rotunda of the Capitol, calling for a ceasefire of Israel and protesting uh, the, the, you know, the Israeli attack on Gaza. They were pro-Palestinian. Let me explain this again. These were Jews that were protesting any kind of action by the Israeli government against the Palestinian. They were actually pro-Palestinian. Let me put this in perspective for you. This is like Jewish POWs at Auschwitz 
high-fiving Hitler as he's walking through the fucking concentration camp. This is what I don't, this is what I don't get. These are college kids, okay? Where did you go wrong, okay? I blame the fucking liberal parents for allowing their kids to have feelings. We didn't have feelings when we were kids. You had a feeling, your father knocked it the fuck out of you quickly. And thankfully they did, okay? I mean, what we wanted to know where all the stupid liberal Jews went, well, here's the answer. What the fuck is wrong with these imbeciles? If this was my kid, I would beat them into a fucking coma and then revive them. And then beat them into a coma again and then revive them. And I would repeat this process until their brains worked properly or until they were dead. Okay? And like I said, to be clear, these were mostly stupid college kids. There was a few... Older, flowered, liberal, fucking retarded cocksuckers there, but these were, and they were all Jews. And this was after that raghead, Congresswoman Tlaib, got everybody all whipped up into a fucking French just outside the state capitol. Again, pro Palestinian rally outside of the capitol, got these people all fucking riled up, okay, saying how Palestine was the victim. Again, this group of Palestinians, the Hamas, these are baby killers. They're raping and killing babies. They're beheading them. They're gouging their fucking eyes out. These are these are victims. If that's a victim, I, I, I then I, I I must be the fucking pope. Like I don't get it. Like I mean, what the? This is a congresswoman, a United States congresswoman. This is why you should never allow ragheads to be in government. I'm sorry. I got no problem with black politicians. I have absolutely no problem with Hispanic ones. I don't even have a problem with Asian ones, which you don't see a lot of those, okay? But I do have a problem, and I don't have a problem with Indian ones, because this is not Indians, this is not Pakistani, that's different. These are these fucking terrorists, these, these, these fucking sand niggas, these, 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 these ragheads, okay? That's what this is. And that, I am not okay with. I said it from the very beginning, when they started letting all these people become I said, no, 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 this is not good. This is not good, okay? You might as well let Nazis run for fucking Congress, too, while we're at it. Okay? So, <clears throat> and she's got pro Palestinian flags hanging outside of her office. How is this woman allowed to even be a fucking congressperson? Okay? I, I mean, we're supposed to all be on the same fucking team here. This is why this country is malfunctioning left, right, and center. So she gets these people all fucking riled up, and what do they do? They storm the Capitol. You know, there's a word for that. I can't... Oh, yeah, insurrection. Now, that's an actual insurrection, because she purposely got them fired up. <coughs> she, t she got them to be fucking agitated and violent. They attacked police officers. But you don't see this. You didn't get the same kind of coverage as January 6th, and I can't understand why. Okay? And what I'm really what I'm really confused about is how come nobody's pressing charges against them for inciting a fucking insurrection? First of all, anybody who's here protesting Israel's response to the fucking Gaza attack is a moron. You are a narcissistic retard. What? You think Israel is going to listen to you fucking idiots? What? All right, there's a couple of upset people in the, in, in, in the United States. There's some young Jewish people that are upset. Maybe we shouldn't do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Please. These people should be dropped over Gaza before they drop the missiles. Anyway, kids, your sports update. NFL, Jesus, mother of Christ. Giants-Bills game last Sunday. I, 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 don't, I don't even know why I watched it. Honestly, I have no idea. I came home Sunday. I was working at the house. I was exhausted. I sat down. I turned the fucking game on. I said, ah. Let me watch a few couple, two, three minutes. Somehow I got sucked into it. Um, the Giants were actually leading with nine points. Three field goals. Not a single fucking touchdown. Three. Now, it wasn't because the Giants were playing so exceptionally well. It's The Bills basically were resting for three quarters. That's, they, just, they just said, you know what, let's just take it easy. They're walking around, you know. Slapping each other in the dick. And the Giants managed to score three field goals and had the lead on the game with 14 minutes left in the fourth. And that's when Buffalo woke up and started playing football and fucking annihilated the shit out of them. 
Now, apparently there was some controversial call at the end of the game. Who gives a fuck? The Giants suck. And this is a Giants fan, lifelong, telling you the Giants absolutely suck. I mean, the fucking Jets played better. The Jets. The, the Jets beat the fucking Eagles last Sunday, which the Eagles are an undefeated team. And, and, and we're supposed to have the franchise fucking quarterback who couldn't play because he had a fucking neck injury from getting sacked 11 times the week before. I, I don't even... They, if I'm John Mara, I would be fucking biting people's skulls like a goddamn gorilla. I, I, I wouldn't pay anybody. I would just not, I would walk into the locker room, you cocksucking motherfucking pieces of shit faggots. I'm paying for football players. I got a bunch of ass grabbing girls. Nobody gets paid until you start winning games. Okay, you win ten fucking games, and then I'll pay you. You see how fast these son of a bitches start playing football. That should be a contract thing, okay? I don't, I don't understand why that's not a thing. Listen, if I don't do my job, you know what happens? You get fired, right? You go to work, you just fucking dick around, they fire you. But why can't we do this with football players or any kind of fucking athlete? Don't pay them until you, you got to win X amount of games, then you get paid. That's it. Here's one or two paychecks just to get yourself straight, and then that's it. You don't see another fucking dollar till you start, till you fucking marry, start winning football games. That's how you fucking, that's how you run it. That's what I would do if I was Mara. Like, I don't even know who to blame. It's so fucking bad. Like, do you blame the head coach? Like, what happened to Dayball and his ginormous fucking nutsack? What happened to this guy? Is it him? Is it the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator? Is it the play? Like, I don't even know who to fucking blame because they're all terrible. Oh, the whole fucking thing is embarrassing. <sighs> anyway, Giants are going to lose to the Redskins, Commanders, Foreskins, whatever the fuck you want to call them this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Jets have a bye week. Bills play the Bucks at 8-15. The Saints got their nuts kicked in last, uh, last night by the Jaguars, so they're not going to be playing until next week. And that brings us to baseball. Yeah, I mean, it's still around. So my Phillies play the Diamondbacks tonight at 8.05. They actually lead the series 2-1. to one. Very happy about this. Astros have tied the Rangers. They play uh, tonight. I think they started at like 5.20-something or other, whatever the fuck. Who cares? Um, <clears throat> NHL, Rangers play the Kraken tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, Islanders, Devils tonight at 7.30. And on Tommy's Pub and Grub Review, we got a special little Halloween treat for you. Now, I didn't take out any of my Halloween t-shirts this year because I packed them all away. I haven't gotten them out. But I am rocking one of my Halloween Yankee hats. I told you, I have a Yankee hat for every every holiday. Uh, that's not a flex. It's a fact. Sad but true. But um, So tonight's pub and grub review. These are not restaurants. I get it. It's not a pub. There's nothing to be... Well, I mean, some of them actually have like food concessions. We're going to talk about haunted houses for a second, okay? I love haunted houses. I'm a bit, Halloween is like my, my favorite holiday. Always was. I hate Christmas. I like Thanksgiving. But Halloween I absolutely love. <coughs> it, it, it come, it, it, it's like the week before my birthday. Well, like a couple days before my birthday. So I always love that. Um, so one of my favorite things to do around this time of year is go to haunted houses. Now, granted, I haven't been to a haunted house in probably a number of years now. But... Uh, doesn't mean I don't love them. So here's my top picks for haunted houses. So you got like the next week, this weekend, next week, next Halloween weekend's coming up. So if you're going to do anything Halloween-ish, this is what you want to do. Now, if you go to one haunted house at all this year, and you only pick one to go to, this is the one you want to go to. Dark Side and Wading River. Hands down, the best fucking haunted house on the island. Bar none. There isn't anything that even comes close, Okay. It's out in Waiting River. It's a dedicated haunted house. This is all this thing does. It's only open from like, I think like mid-September to the first week of November. And that's it. Boss that closes. But it is probably the best haunted house experience you're ever going to fucking see. So if you only go to one, this is the one you want to go to. This is my top overall pick out of all of them. Next up, Gateway Playhouse in Bellport. This is my... Another one of my favorites, okay? It's not as good as Dark Side. Like I said, nothing tops Dark Side, but it's pretty fucking close. 
Now, Gateway is actually going to give you... This is at the Gateway Playhouse in Belport. This is, and they, they've been doing this for like, I think the last fucking 25 years or so. Whatever the fuck it is. <clears throat> um, same with Dark Side. Uh, Gateway gives you the most bang for your buck. Okay, because it's long. It's a long experience. So you go, first of all, you don't have to stay online like some mama look. They have like a midway. And in the midway, like it's like a lounge. You can sit and have a couple of beers. They serve, you know, they have like... You know, food trucks and shit, and you just hang out. They give you, like, a buzzer. Like, you go, you, you buy your tickets online or whatever. You go, you scan it. They give you a buzzer. When it's your time to line up, you'll get buzzed. So you can just hang out, relax, chill out, school. Now, <clears throat> what this does is it takes you to, through three different, like, experiences. I don't want to ruin them for you. I mean, I'm sure they've changed them over the years. But um, just like when you think you're done, another one. So this, and it's long. It's a long one. This will give you the most bang for your buck, hands down. <clears throat> um, if you don't, if you're in Nashua and you don't feel like schlepping all the way out to the ass end of Suffolk County, because both of these places are about a good hour away, um, and you want something a little bit closer, there is a pretty good one uh, in Copeg, which I know is Suffolk County, but it's Western Suffolk. It's the fucking hood. It's just right over from Farmingdale. It's not far. Uh, matter of fact, from Main Street and Farmingdale, it's about 15 minutes. Um, this one's a pretty good one too. It's in a it's in a warehouse in in in, in Copeg. It's called Darkness Rising. Um, it's pretty quick. It's actually the least expensive out of all of them, but it is it is pretty good. Um, I do recommend it. Um, now, if you really want a quintessential haunted house experience, and you feel like taking a little adventure, you want to go on a little road trip, there's only one place I'm going to suggest: Penhurst Asylum. Now, just want to preface this. Now, I don't. I like haunted houses. I love them actually, but I never get scared. I, it's just you know, when I go with people, they're like, "Dude, what the fuck? You're like a gargoyle." Like I, everybody walks behind me, and I don't get scared. It's just, you can't. I don't get. The only thing that terrifies me is bankruptcy. That's it. Okay, but I do have a tendency. Like if you startle me, I I just swing. Like it's it's a reflex. Like I don't mean to do it. It's just boom. And over the years, I've gotten into a couple of altercations going through haunted houses. Somebody jumps up and like gets in my grill and bang, and I just hit him. It's just it's how I don't know what it is. It's just me. Um, <laughs> in Penhurst Asylum, I I did get into a little bit of an altercation there. But before I get into so basically, this is actually this haunted experience is done in an old abandoned mental asylum in Spring City, Pennsylvania. It's a good, it's a good ride. I would say from New York to uh, <coughs> Spring City, it's got to be <clears throat> a little over four hours maybe, but well, well worth it. Well, well worth it. So once you go in, there's a bunch of different experiences. You buy one ticket, you're bouncing around, and they're, they're fucking, they're great, okay? They, they really are. Now, Penhurst Asylum is actually fucking haunted. It was been documented by many different types of paranormal investigators and so on and so on so you go through the haunted house thing okay and they had like a bunch of different levels of haunted house like you know if, if whatever terrifies you they have okay so like for example um there was this one and I was with my girlfriend at the time. This was many, 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 many moons ago. I want to say it had to be like 2015. Or so. I don't know what the fuck. It was somewhere around there. 2016, whatever. No, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe 2016, 2015, 2016, somewhere. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So, long story short, like she, um, she's like claustrophobic. She doesn't like anything like pushing up against her or whatever. So, there's this one room that was really cool. They had like these two big inflatables in there, but they fill it with like this fog. So when you're walking through, you feel like you're wading through like a mucky swamp. It was pretty, like, if I didn't know any better, that's what it felt like. And she's freaking the fuck out because she doesn't like the closed in feeling. And I can't see more than like an inch and a half in front of me because this thing was filled with fog. So she's freaking out. She's pushing me and I can't see. I'm like, stop fucking pushing me. And I turned around to tell her that, and all of a sudden, this fucking creature jumps up in front. I don't know where it fucking came from. He had, like, this big werewolf mask on, just fucking pops up in front of me. As I turn around, ah, bang! And I fucking hit him. 
I hit him so I knocked him out. I think I broke his jaw. Because you cracked. And I grabbed him by his shirt. And she goes, what the fuck did you do? And ah, ah, he jumped at me. I hit him. So I, I picked him up. And I fucking threw him. And I grabbed him. I said, come on. And we ran out. So she's like, oh, they're going to throw us out. Because they tell you you're not supposed to touch the actors. Like, they can grab you in PA. But you're not supposed to touch them. And I always go in and say, look. Anyone touches me, I'm touching them right back. And it's not going to be as pleasant. That's all. I don't like being touched. So we go through this other experience, and it was uh, clowns. And I don't like clowns. Not because I'm afraid of clowns. They just irritate the shit out of me. I don't like them. So I was wearing a hat, obviously. And I'm walking through, and this clown went to grab my hat. And my girlfriend at the time looked at me. She said, oh, please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't touch his hat. And I touched her and looked at him like, and I, he said something stupid. I said, motherfucker, you touch my hat, I'll break your arms. I don't pay you enough for this shit. <laughs> <clears throat> but that aside. It was it was it was it was a fun experience. Now, at the end, you can actually walk through like you take a guided tour through the actual asylum which is haunted. So naturally, I wanted to do that. And as we're going in, this girl comes running out screaming and crying. She wasn't an actor, she was actually just, Oh my god, something like touched me and they had it on film like they were, I don't know, her boyfriend was videoing something and all of a sudden you see her hair like would go up like this. It looked like somebody picked up her head. It was the fucking creepiest thing. Like the guy's showing me. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. This girl's having a mental breakdown, and we're like, we're high fiving each other. It's awesome. But I didn't see any kind of haunted experience in there. But it is a fucking amazing place. So if you want to take a really good haunted experience, go to Penner's Asylum. And listen, if you're in PA, you might as well stop at Eastern State Penitentiary, which is another great haunted house. It's an old abandoned prison right in the middle of downtown philly um it's historical but they do a big haunted house attraction there too and it's it's actually very good and one of the one of the things about eastern state penitentiary is you know al capone um you know he he had a little bit of an extended stay there so you can see his cell and they say that Al Capone still haunts his own cell, which I call bullshit on. I said, there's absolutely no fucking way, okay? Because Capone's a Brooklyn guy, okay? You know, listen, he, died, he didn't die in jail. He died from syphilis at his mansion in Miami. So if he's going to haunt anything, he's going to haunt Miami. What ghost, especially an Italian from Brooklyn, voluntarily goes and puts himself back in jail after they're dead? Don't make sense. So, I don't believe that legend. But other than that, these are some good haunted house picks for you. So, feel free to indulge yourself. Happy fucking Halloween. Okay. On what the fuck is that? We're going to talk about the Presidential Olympics. Take a look at this. <laughs> good morning and thank you for joining us for day one of the Presidential Olympics. And it's a, a lovely day here in Delaware. And the day one event, as always, is the Air Force One Stairway event. <laughs> Straightforward, but has seen its share of adventures over the years. Just going over some last minute pointers here with his uh, personal trainer and coach. And it's a confident salute and steady approach. Just using the standard grip and pull technique that was popularized by Woodrow Wilson in the early 1700s. And will he attempt the turn and wave? He does, he doesn't disappoint, and it's, uh, it's a smooth delivery. And next up, Joseph Robinette Biden, of course representing the United States of Ukraine. Also receiving some last minute pointers from his coach. And it's a confident salute with a light jog attempt, still with a grip and pull, but it seems to be doing the uh, trick. Oh, and I, nope, I was about to say he seems to be doing the trick, it's gone, he's gone twice, and he's gone a third time. That, we, we've never seen that before. Just reaching out to the other handrail and realizing his arms aren't long enough. Doing a little jog move at the end there. Will he go for the turn and wave? No, he's saluting. That, that's, a, that's a solid salute to finish. I'm losing his balance there a little bit just as he disappears into the plane. And Donald Trump's second attempt. People are saying it's already over. Uh, Trump just needs to have a solid ascent. And uh, it's probably beyond Biden's reach. And Trump just going for the left-handed ascent there, showing off he's uh, ambidextrous. First attempt, of course, was a right-handed ascent, uh, going for the left-handed. Same grip and pull technique and a steady pace. 
Not even bothering to turn and wave. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to risk it. Doesn't need the points. And I think he knows it's it's already in the bag. And we're back for Joe Biden's second attempt. Some people saying he'd need to do a full sprint with somersault to get the points back. I think he knows it's beyond him now. He's he's taking it very steadily. He's, he was grip and pulling, but he's just let go of the handrail. Is he trying to claw some put? No, he's gone again. And this has been a disaster for Joe Biden. What a sad sight it is to see. Turns, not even the... Oh, he's going for the wave, not the salute. But that's, that is tragic. And you can see here the moment where he actually lets go of the handrail. Um, maybe he was trying to finish in style. We're already hearing from his team that they're complaining about the low light. Maybe that played a part. We, we just don't know. But it's, we can all agree it's, it's been a terrible, terrible day for Team Biden. They'll have to put this day behind them and prepare for tomorrow's event, day two, which is walking off stage. We'll be covering that all day on the BBC. Don't forget to tune in. I can't get enough of watching Joe Biden climb stairs, I swear to God. <laughs> uh, all right, kids on, right, a racist. Um, one out of every five Americans say they have recently spoked marijuana, according to this 2016 Gallup poll. Well, that's racist. Okay, um, well, 43% of Americans say that they've tried it. Uh, according to this, only one out of every eight are current users. I personally think they got to redo this fucking poll because it feels like everybody's fucking stoned. Okay? All right, kids, your PSA. You know, they, <laughs> you, you know... You ever see, like, insurance people or real estate people? They're all fucking stupid. It, it, they, they, one thing that I just that drives me insane is when people put their picture on their fucking business cards or in the signature tag of their fucking email. Who wants to see your stupid fucking face? You look ridiculous. I, I don't even do that, okay? And people go, oh, my God, you're, you're like, oh, you love yourself. Yeah, I do. Absolutely, no one else says, I do, but I don't put my face on anything, okay? You'll see my face when you need to see my face, okay? Listen, some people are, are absolutely titillated when they see my face. Most people are usually terrified. Either way, I don't give a shit, but I don't put it like on, on like, I don't send out, like, marketing stuff or put it on my business card. Like I said, you'll see me when you need to see me. You look fucking ridiculous. Oh, oh, every real estate person. Like, they're just smiling like they just got a fucking... Like, they got Amadou Diallo right up the ass. Like, like they're, they're big, they have these big fucking gigantic headshots. You look ridiculous. I don't want to buy a house from you. I refuse to buy, buy, buy anything from anybody that puts their picture on their fucking business cards. It's just stupid as fuck. Listen. I know I'm an Adonis, Okay. I'm better looking than most, and I don't put my fucking picture on anything. Okay, you want to see what I look like? Meet me. Get on a fucking Zoom call. Watch the show. Okay, but most people who do business with me do meet me when they meet me. I like the shock value. Okay, you look at like realtors. Girls do this a lot too. It's not just girls, guys. Like I get it if you're a pretty girl and you do it. I'll give you a bit of a pass because you know. It's going to get attention. But if you look like a fucking ball of shit, don't put your picture on it. Matter of fact, don't even show up. Just do everything over the fucking phone. Anyway. <laughs> Stay covid list, kids. No mask. Don't ask. Haters can kiss my ass. And remember, who loves you, baby? It's been your Friday wrap-up. I'll see you when I see you.